to give them our culture to sell it back to us. Mm. And that and we're appreciative. We're, we're like humble, like thank you for letting us give you our culture. That trick has never resonated with me. And I just noticed that number one, I'm better than everybody at everything. That everybody, like from my culture, they're like in awe of like movie makers and music makers and fashion makers and magazine makers, everything makers. I'm actually a maker. I'm maker's mark. You know, I can realize or I can recognize some of the potential before they recognize it themselves, like a Jay Z or a Kanye. Yeah. Kanye always knew who he was, so not to be funny. But what you mean, like he knew that he was the, that big, like yeah. Mm. He would always feel as about the world, yeah. you know, unapologetic. Other people that I've trained and taught were a bit more insecure, and they presented a different version of themselves than they really were. Mm. But that's another story. Yeah. Well, my point is, um, you know. My experience and everything that I stand for is making sure that other people that I love don't have to go through the pain that I've gone through. And that's the only reason for being strong. And I think as a man, I think people need to realize that that's what you're here for. To fight for those that you love so your woman can create. Because we can't make a baby. Yeah. We can't create life. A woman has to do that. But she shouldn't have to be worried about all other bullshit to create life. Yeah. You know? So I know my job when it's fine to fight for life. The last thing is dash. Mm. You know, there's a day you die, there's a day you born, the dash in between is the life. That's me. I'm life. So I live it unapologetically and truthfully. I don't care what the masses are doing. I, I actually don't want to be with the masses. I don't. Yeah. I always want to make sure I stand out in the crowd. I never want to say what everyone else is saying. If I am, I got to say it first. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, even early, just like, you know, from the times I remember, like, just talking about ownership and owning your product, that, you know, you've been screaming that since day one. And I know there's been an interesting, you know, conversation that evolved. I don't know if you saw, like, uh, Joe Bunnett's deal with Spotify. That kind of brought up talking about, like, black ownership, right? Like, you know, him saying how much money he wanted. And, you know, Charlamagne has his podcast network, and they were kind of going back and forth on what's the best model. And I know even back in your, you know, the Breakfast Club interview, I was legendary. You were telling them, like, you know, own your own network and own your own platform. When you see that and conversations like that happen, like, what do you feel is the best method? Is it cool, like, partnering with, like, an iHeart? Or is it just, like, better to do it straight to see my own? Well, partnering is different than working for. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you're a fair partner, a real partner, I think it's all right to make it work for you. They could distribute your shit. You know, as it relates to Joe Button, you know, I signed Joe Buttons, the Rockefeller. Yeah. Jay Vito that. But I did sign him nonetheless. But when he did get that initial plug with Spotify, I loved Joe Button. When I asked him for the plug, he didn't ask. Mm, what so, you mean, the Spotify plug? Yeah, I'm like, yo, I got it. You know, which club, but again, I'm not going to do on Joe Buttons. Yeah. But my point is, you know, people start to talk about their oppression when it's convenient for them at times. But before the oppression, you gotta pass the plug. Mm. And I just noticed that we don't pass the plug. Joe Buttons, Noriega, mm. those are my brothers that I signed, but when I ask them for a plug, they never get passed. I love them, but I am curious to know why. But again, I'm for them for their independence, but sometimes people only start to talk about independence when it includes them, not the culture. Mm. So when I was talking about independence, I still am. I was independent, still. I, I wasn't fighting for it. I was just making people aware of it. Yeah. When it wasn't so convenient for me as, you know, business, I wanted to fit in. But I didn't want to fit in. I wanted to freeze. You know what I mean? Right. So I just think we got to stick together. Let's not wait for them to jerk us for us to get mad. Don't let them jerk us. Mm. You feel me? And when somebody's trying to help you, or if someone has helped you, you're in a position, pass the fucking plug. Yeah. And that's the problem with us. We protect the plug. We don't pass it. Why do you think that is? Is it, is it like do we not have to a battle thing, or is it like just we're programmed? We're programmed to think they're better than us. We're programmed to think that we need them when we don't. It's a good trick. I'm not mad at them for that. I get it. I'm mad at us. I'm mad at me. Actually, I'm not mad at me because I never had to sustain that kind of pressure. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it. Like I was in boarding school, and I remember a big wrestler from Texas calling me a nigga, and I broke his jaw. Man. 
I remember another wrestler calling me, nigga, and I put dipstick and put garbage on. This is me, a teenager. I've never had to feel the oppression or internalized racism. I've always been able to take it back. But I feel sorry for those that can't. Mm. And that's who I fight for, the weak. But the weak are the same motherfuckers that resent me. Why do you think that? Because they resent strength. Because they're not. Insecurity. Mm. But it's all right. All good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the interesting thing is, you know, what you said is like even protecting the weak, but it seems like, you know, a lot of these deals and structured things are even happening on a high level, right? Like you mentioned, you know, you obviously brought Ye and Sanye. Slavery is a choice. You sign those deals, no one makes you. Mm. You've been influenced, but no one made you. I advise good people not to sign bad deals, they do it anyway. Yeah. You know, money makes people do things that are dumb. And that doesn't give them happiness or wealth. It gives them unhappiness and some more insecurity. But, you know, I just think that because of the way we're programmed, we think winning is what other people think. We think winning is being acknowledged by another culture. That needs to stop. Yeah. And I've been at the forefront of that for decades. And I'm enjoying, yes, now. But I've been enjoying it the whole time. Trust me. Everybody, I want you to smell your roses now, bro. I've been smelling the whole time. Mm. No one disrespects me in my face. I love that. But when you see like how Kanye is, you know, tweeting that how you know Universal still got him tied up, and you know he can't own his masters. It's even happening at that type of level. Like, what do you tell you know somebody like Ye in that position, like going about trying to secure that? Thank you, bro. I agree. I told him to relax. <laughs> <laughs> But I understand what he's fighting for and the frustration that come with it when you got the money and you can't buy something because you're in a deal where we your people can control something you own. Mm. But again, that could have been avoided in the beginning. The problem is people take advantage of young people. Thank you. People take advantage of young people and young people sometimes have to get hit very hard to learn. Mm. But, you know, if you're smart when you're young, you learn from other people so you don't have to feel pain anymore. You're going to evolve from other people's pain. That's the purpose of other people going through, through it and surviving. There's everything I've been through. If I tell you I've been through it, it's for you to learn from me. Or else I went through it in vain. But to be honest, I've been out of fun the whole way. There's struggle. Other than the natural tragedies that happen that I can't control, every single second of my life has been very rosy. Mm. And I'm 50. That's great. Still got more to go. I mean, I just started. The run has just begun. Yeah. Because I'm nice at everything. <laughs> yeah. And I know that. Right. No one got to tell me. Right, right. Um, I think that's the power. People wait for people to tell them they're good. You got to know you're good. It doesn't give a fuck what other people think or what they say. You have to know you're good. Is that a name or did you learn that? Nah. I just always knew it. It was logical. How could somebody weaker tell somebody stronger than they're better than them? Yeah. It makes no sense. I'll smack your nose on. <laughs> but even in the sense, like, we, if we're talking about, like, ownership and having control of our culture, right? Like, where, you know, we're talking about black labels, you know what I mean? Owned, owned black labels. Is that something that's possible today? Because I know you've been critical of, like, you know, Joey Ie or um, Leo. Is it possible to even do that, like, in this climate? See, I don't understand what you're saying. You're talking to me in nickels. I should make in keys. You feel me? How so? Well, that business you're talking about isn't a real business. It's all perceptions and decide. It ain't real money. That's why I left it decades ago. Yeah. So when you talk, it's not even a real business. Mm. Oh, it's, it doesn't yield. It's a plaque. It's a stepping stone to something else. And people pretend it's more than it is. Mm. So people get more caught up in perception, labels, and other bullshit, especially with social media, you know, it makes things not real. And that's not the language I really speak. That's yeah. not the, that's not the, um, I'm not selling that product. You know what I mean? Right. I'm selling weight. I'm not selling nickels. So if you ask me like, yo, how do you sell nickels with two for five of trades? I'd be like, why would you even do that? Right. Why would you deal with the politics that come with it? But I mean, even outside of music, right? Like, let's just say like, the NBA players, if they started their own league, is, yeah. that, like, is that something that's doable? Why is it not? I, that's what I think. I don't well, know. The reason why it's not doable is because we all stick together. But of course it's doable. Everybody, like 90% of the NBA is black, right? Exactly. So then why wouldn't it? Same with NFL. 
Same with boxing and almost every other physical sport, right? Yeah. So if we said y'all can't make no money unless we own it, yeah. or else we not playing, right? Of course we can. That's why I always say I have my own label, I have my own company label, I have my own stream service, I have my own phone line. We make our own goals. Yeah. We make our own education. You know, you can't expect your oppressor to give you anything to, to, other than something that they'll keep you oppressed. Right. So stop looking for somebody to give you something as a way out. We have to make the way out. The door has to be kicked out. But in an intelligent way, not a frustrated break glass way, in a profitable economic way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the only way that happens is to stick together. Do you think that, like, I guess, cause, like, let's say theoretically, right? The players did that. Like, yo, we strike until we get our own league, we need our own shit. And the amount of money that you would have to put up, no, you know, like arenas and venues and team members. Why do you think that? So the owners are putting up. Question. Why do you think that? Because I think that the current owners, as it stands, are putting up money. They're not putting the fucking dollar. You don't think so? Bro, they leverage their deals with um, the networks, with the money they're going to make at. Bottom line is they generate income. So you don't put up money when you're generating other people's income. It's like you get hit with consignment. Right. They just need to pay Paul, Paul paid them all. Right. Nobody put up the money. They ain't putting put the money in there. Yeah. They don't put up a fucking dollar. And most people that buy teams don't put up their own money. They come from a fund that they represent. Mm. Like most businesses, it's all bullshit. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But it don't cost that much to leverage. So why is that not something we can do? Like if LeBron and all these guys just came together and said, you know what, fuck this. When's the last time you saw us even stick together? Well, this whole George Floyd thing, I feel like, kind of blows. When is the last time you saw us stick together in any bit? Um, the Lakers didn't play when. When's the last time you saw black people stick together in any bit? That's my question. The NBA. What the NBA is The Lakers didn't play that game. Uh, they put the game. It's not a business, bro. That's people that work saying I'm not working. What I'm saying, when was the last time you saw black people stick together? In business ownership, mm, in ownership, we don't own enough to really do that. What do you mean, no? I own enough to stick together with someone else. That owns a we all stick together. We own a lot. Right. That's not the question I asked. I didn't ask you to tell me about anybody's pockets. The question I asked you yeah. was, "When's the last time you saw a black people stick together in any business?" As a owner, um, it's been a minute. Man. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. A minute. Drawing a blank. Like on, on on smaller levels, but like what's smaller level? Local levels, local what businesses. Local level? Like smaller business, small business. Um it's a lot of um is that a big I'm thinking, man. I'm trying to get this in. How long is it gonna take? <laughs> a whole show? Nah. The bottom point man. That's the problem. Point man. It should be quicker. Yeah. It shouldn't take a whole show. And that's our problem. They don't stick together. I've been trying to get us to stick together. And we don't. Yeah. We will at some point. What does it take? It takes making money. It takes winning so other people want to be a part of winning. Mm. Mm, I feel that. Man, so just, you know, switching gears a little bit. I know, uh, you know, I saw you and, and Minister Farrakhan on your Instagram going around and it looked like farming. Like I saw like the fresh vegetables and stuff like that. Yeah, the minister is a dumb. I actually had the pleasure of talking to him the day for about an hour. Mm. But when I, he sent for me, and you know, I thought you were talking about something else. He said, since me because I know that you've been talking about farming, let me think you gotta do it. And he told me. Wow. And you've been very generous about the information. It's not the information that you think. He's a genius, he's fast, and he's important to us. I think we should appreciate what you've done. Absolutely. Um, how important like you talking about farming, is that something that you're now thinking about doing like on your own and farming and been thinking about it? The question is why in school don't they teach us how to farm to be self sustaining? The way they don't teach us how to be entrepreneurs, pay taxes, or they don't teach us how to pass law. They teach us how to play basketball. Yeah. They teach us how to distract us from any kind of education. But the education that they offer us is for us to get a job, not to break the social class, but to survive and that. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, <clears throat> when, if we're talking about like just farming and, and agriculture, like us, even owning that, does that give us more leverage in the marketplace? Like us being able to have. It means I don't need you, I can feed myself. You know, but also GMO seeds, what's the government make sure people grow when they sell it? That's what's killing us as a culture. Yeah. You know, the meat and all the other things that come with it. 
you know, all the things that are unnatural, the preservatives and all that give us diabetes, cancer, heart disease. And I'm seeing gangsters that don't die from a bullet, die from a cheeseburger. So it is important to understand what you put in your body. It makes no sense to spend so much money on foreign cars, designer clothes, and to put cheap food in your body. Yeah. You know, eat the same fucking food as a dope thing. Why? Right, right, right. And that's, no, that's dope, man. I, I want to meet the minister, man. I'll be hoping to get something one of these days, man. That's do something. Why? All right. You got to fight for somebody other than yourself. Mm. You know, we fight for love. And that's what the minister fights for. Because he's good. And he can protect himself, bro. Yeah. He's trying to protect all of us. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, the community is protective over him as, as we should be. I know I saw Vlad, he made his comments about the minister and a bunch of people got mad. I thought you've been vocal about it, Vlad. You want it like that? Mm. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I feel it. I mean, why why do you think the culture still supports him as far as going? Fuck that. Right. Huh? Next question. Um, just culture roaches in general. How do we go like, is there something like, you know, people getting canceled there? Is it like you move to cancel them? Is it just like you tolerate them? Like what is the thing that's Think about like just you know maneuvering with the culture vultures better. Be the boss. Kick them out your house. The best way to deal with racism. I walk in somebody that's a racist house, I buy the house, I kick them out. Mm. You don't hire my people, I buy your business. Or put you out of business. It ain't about asking, it's about telling. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you you bought a uh I saw you in Wyoming out there with Kanye. Um Buying land out there? Yeah, Puerto Rico. <laughs> is that like for fun? Is that like growing stuff? Is that like what do you do with a branch? You make, you know, you make content. You live our life. You know. I, I think everyone should buy some land. That's what the uh, minister thought. Mm. Buy some land so you can grow some shit on it. Do what you want. Create your own grow your own boat. Is it expensive doing it? Doing that? No. What do you feel like as far as um, business is concerned? You've dabbled in, you know, tons of businesses, tons of, of, of different sectors. Um, what do you advise people to like get into and put their money if they're trying to be like make, you know, make some profit? Do something that you love. Never do something. Never get paid to do something that you wouldn't do for free. Because then it never feels like work. So I don't go to work. I don't fun all day and get paid for it. Mm. You know, what, what was what was your biggest lick? Like, what industry would you say was your big, like, damn, I've had a, this time period it was. It's all relative, you know? It's a little bit stuff. Yeah. When I did the music thing, I didn't consider it so much bread. Fashion. Yeah. A lot of work, good bread. I think the um, heavy residual income, making content that gave you money 20 years later. Having a television network like Game Dash Studios launching DTV 24 hour network. Yeah. And then, you know, I just, I just think making content is important, but not like, you know, Instagram content. Shit with the beginning, middle, and end with a narrative, you know, that people will want to watch over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you, you've been making movies, you know, obviously I saw a couple of the, um, the, the new trailers and stuff that you had out. How hard is that? Like, you know, I know you've been doing it for a while, right? Like this ain't new to you, but is it hard, you know, now that it's like solely you on your own actually creating these films and, and putting it up? No, nah, it's way easier. Easier? Yeah. Which is like how so? Like you would think it's like, you, you know, if you do it with a production company and come with more manpower, but like- That's, you what, they That's what they make you think. It's way easier to go with your friends and pay for it and find the people when you don't like what they're doing and, you know, I'm the boss, bro. Yeah. I ain't gotta ask somebody, I ain't gotta walk on no eggshells, I do shit when I feel like it. If something's gonna get fucked up, I'm gonna fuck it up. Nobody else. Mm, that makes sense. But you would, so you would take a partnership, you would be open to like partnering with Spotify and all some stuff. Yeah. Partnerships are fine, I ain't working for them. Yeah. Is anything left, like, anything less than 50 50 equals working for them? Or is it still, because you still have a partnership if it's not 50 50? What's the question? Like, could you still have a partnership? Like, if it's not 50-50 to split, is it still considered a partnership? Let's say if it was like 60-40, is that still a partnership? Yeah, but, you know, I have to be 60 
And like I work with record labels, they distribute, they get 25%. That's a partnership that they work with. You. It's just the nature of the partnership. Yeah. Man, I feel that. I love that, man. Damn, man. Well, I mean, what, what's next, man? Because you just like, I just never know where they is going with it, man. It feels like you just, you always jump into something new. Like, just how do you, how do you keep the engine moving? Like, from here? Having fun. I love creating. I love fashion. I love music. I love making movies. I love helping my brothers and my sisters. I'm just having a ball, bro. Yeah. I just, I'm just, I can't even really articulate how much fun I've been having for the last 30 years. Uh, I feel it. When I walked in, I see it felt like genuine fun, man. You want a mic just going crazy with it, man. I just do what I want to do. Yeah. But it don't hurt nobody. And I get, you know, I, I sell what I do. And if you don't like it, just change the channel. Right. You know? But I'm honest, I'm free, and that's priceless. Man. You know, it's like some people are slaves, but the title is not the same. You know what I mean? They tell you you're free, but you still work like a slave and you still have the same anxieties as a slave. Mm. What makes you not a slave? Is there a certain dollar amount that make you feel that you wouldn't feel like that? Man, about a dollar is about how much I laugh, how much my girl and my kids laugh. They're going to laugh if you got 250 M's. They, they laugh. Don't care. I got they just make sure, as long as they happy, I'm happy. And that's what. As long as I'm laughing and they're happy, you know, it's like imagine having a bunch of money and you know, you're sick. Mm -hmm. Someone you love is sick. That shit don't matter. Yeah. Money is a physical thing that's meant to distract us. Love is the currency that we should be paying attention to. And, you know, how happy are you? I, you know, like if I'm rich and I'm unhappy, I would pay anything to be happy. Right. Unhappy is broke. So look how many people have these so-called dreams come true and you can read about them overdosing and end up rehab or you know, just mentally unstable. Right. That ain't wolf. Yeah. Sure. When you heard Dash contemplating any kind of crazy stuff like that. Yeah. When you never when you saw Dane Dash not having fun. Ever. <laughs> like visually. When did you ever oh, see Dane Dash? I still have me out pouring champagne in the claw. But uh, from you know, even now when my shit is planned, yeah. it's, it's been I've been having a ball the right. whole fucking time. I don't I don't even understand why anyone would have life without having a ball. Yeah. You know, all the insecurities of being broke, I never felt it as an adult, not even as a kid. All the insecurities of being black in America, I always thought that was a strength, not a weakness. Mm. And I've, you know, I've been feeling sorry for everyone else that has it, but I haven't personally had to feel that. Like, you know, it felt like, I would say held back, but like the system propels, you know, I feel like it's harder, it's harder for you. And the, well, system. the system, I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to hit to a system that's set up to make me a slave. Yeah. It's funny, you know, I look at the system, I see people get enamored by it, try to fit into it. And I'm like, why go into someone's house you don't own? Build your own house and create your own system. And that's what I've always done. Yeah. Acceptance is not wealth to me. Mm. Acceptance is not wealth. Wow. I like that. Man, ah, uh, man. So your thing just, you know, last time I'm gonna take up too much of your time now. I'm appreciative of this. Um one of the last things I wanted to ask you about was just like like black leadership, right? Like I feel like Back in the day, it was kind of like, you felt like there was more leaders, right? Like you had people to look to that collectively tell us like, yo, you know, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to move. And everybody kind of like followed that. And I feel like now it's not really like that. Um, do you feel like that, that type of era is dead? Like, do we need leadership to move forward or like, how do we collectively move forward? It's a different forward? kind of leadership. There's a leadership that brings awareness to things, but doesn't do anything. But there's a new kind of leadership, the commission. You know, as Senator Andre Carson, and rather Congressman Andre Carson, Senator um, Eddie, Eddie Milton, Bishop Purnell, Dr. Chris Purnell, you know, therapists like Todd, and 
it's the OSG network with Dennis McKee with 90 black principals around the world. You know, we're not only bringing awareness to things, because we don't expect our person to help us. We're going to actually do things for us, us helping us. It's a perfect time for new leaders, but a different kind of leader. Mm. You know, yeah. it's a different kind of narrative. Fuck yelling, fuck bringing awareness without an answer. You know, economical empowerment means that if there's a problem, you pay for it. And, you know, my energy is contagious, it's bringing it in. To look at forms and look at my suits, you read about them. Mm. <laughs> I love that, man. Yo, Dan, thank you very much for your time, brother. This is this is meaningful, man. For me, I, I personally got to make sure I give you give you your flowers, man. You, you're part of the reason um, that I do what I do, man. So thank you, brother. I appreciate Big shout out to Sasha. Big shout out to Sasha. Hey, man. Sasha, the one that put this together. Sasha, I appreciate you. And I, you know, I have a baby coming. I'm, I'm not even, this is my last day outside. Yeah. But yeah. I'm going back in quarantine again for another couple of weeks. Man, congratulations. Yeah, that's the thing. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Ladies, I'm 50. I'm 49, but I'm going to be 50 other days since I was 45. When you were there? May 3rd. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, this is what 50 shit look like. It's cool. If, you, if you're 50 ain't this fun, you're yeah. funny yourself. If you're not having this much fun at 35, 25, or 45, you're playing yourself. Oh, is it more fun at 50? What was the funnest? What was the funnest though? Everything was fun. The only thing is 30, 40s, 50s. I've been making history every you know, since I've been born. Nothing's been whack. You know, just look at my decade. I haven't I've never sat still in any decade. Yeah. But now the second. I'm not half of what I did before. I'm half of what I'm doing now. I'm half of my perspective now, even though it's consistent with what I was doing before, but I was sitting around home doing yeah. I don't think I would hit that home. But the fact that I'm doing well and I still care this this long and I haven't been outside tap dance. I'm not the old man in the club doing shit young niggas ago. Yeah. I ain't got no malice or I'm not mad at the young niggas for being young niggas. They're gonna make mistakes, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. They create. It's definitely different than I was, but you supposed to be. That shit was fifty years ago. Right. But, you know, because I'm not surviving of young niggas, I'm not worried about what they're doing. But I do want them to make sure that they don't hurt themselves in the future. And that they hustle for the right reason and they don't feel the same pain that we have. Or else, again, our pain was in vain. Unless you learn from your pain, it's done for no reason. It's not a loss if you learn from it. It's a learning experience, you know? Facts. Yeah. And, ladies and gentlemen, dope ass up interview. So many gems, so many jewels, the legend himself. It's a dang dash. How? If you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.